That's the great mother, nature. The queen, the matrix. The matrix is something from which all things form. Same root word as matter, mother. All the same root word. The matriarch, the container, the cornucopia. The object to be fertilized, the source of all things. The fecund, the pregnant. There are more parts of the association network. The strange, the emotional, the foreigner, the place of return and rest. The deep, the valley, the cleft, the cave, hell, death and the grave. The moon, ruler of the night and the mysterious dark. And matter in the earth. So, those aren't necessarily associated with femininity. But they're typically associated with femininity from a symbolic perspective. You know, so like generally... Like a witch in a movie doesn't come riding out of the full bright sun at noon, right? That just doesn't happen, because it doesn't make sense. It's a dark thing. And so if you saw that occurring in the light in a movie, you'd think... You know, what the hell's going on here? That doesn't make sense. And the reason it doesn't make sense is because it's, it, violates the, it violates the complex, the symbolic complex. So... Those are sort of those are sort of female those are female denizens of the underworld and hell. Very pleasant creatures. It's like a Medusa with the head of snakes, you know. And if you might, if you ask, you know, why would a woman have a head of snakes in reference to a man? And that's really simple. I bet there are men here who know the answer to that. Come on, Jesus, think about it. What emotion do you feel? When you're going to approach someone you're very attracted to, and there's an extremely high probability that she's going to tell you to disappear. <laughs> right. Exactly. Absolutely. Because it's a real judgment, right? We're going to see a movie called Crumb, where you'll see this in great detail. But it's a real judgment. It's like the best judgment is, well, I don't mind your physical presence, but your genes should definitely not survive another generation. <laughs> Right, and that's sort of generally translated into, I think we should just be friends. <laughs> right, you know, and you can blow that off, and people do, and you have to, because it's part of being polite and civilized, but, you know, let's make no mistake about it. There is no more fundamental judgment than that. So, paralysis, and there's no shortage of men, I mean, who are absolutely terrified of women. I mean, I've had many of them in my practice, you know, I had... One guy, he was so terrified of women, he couldn't even talk to them on the phone. It's more common than you think. So, but it's generally manifested by men who, do, who no one cares about, so it's generally irrelevant. So, well, it's the, it's the case. It really is the case. I'm, I'm not kidding. They're low-status men. You know, they're people that are generally regarded as losers. And there isn't anybody who really gives a damn about what happens to them one way or another. And there's a lot more men in that category than there are women. Women are in all sorts of, you know, social categories that cause the misery and distress, but... So, you know, and that's a deity, you might think, well, why would something like that be a deity? And it's something like, uh, well, it's the sum total of all fears. And, you know, you might think, well, you don't believe in that sort of thing. It's like, yeah, you do. You just don't know you do. Of course you do. You can't not believe in it. You know, you're, the manner in which you allow it to be represented and what you do with those representations, that's a whole different matter. But, you know, you're not watching vampire movies for nothing. Right? You say, well, you don't believe in vampires. It's like... That's actually not true. You believe in them enough to go watch them on movies. So, like, wh wh where are you going to define belief exactly? If someone comes up to you and says, do you believe in vampires? You know, you're going to say, well, no. And then they'll ask you, well, would you spend, like, two hours this month watching them? And the answer would be yes. And so you might think, well, which is the better indicator of what you believe? Like, what do you know about what you're like? Who cares about your statements about yourself? You know, you think you have privileged access to what you're like? You don't. You've only been around for 18 years. You know, and you inhabit this body that's been built up over 400 million years of life. Something like that. It might be longer than that. So it is longer. I mean, that's when... Crustaceans emerged. Life itself is much older than that. So, you know, the people who made this representation of Kelly, assuming they made it, which they really didn't, because it manifested itself in their imagination, which is a completely different thing, they're trying to come to terms with something pretty awful. Or you might say they're trying to come to terms with the category of all awful things. Or you could even be more sophisticated than that, and you could say they're trying to come to terms with the category of all awful things that also reveals new life. 
It's a terribly paradoxical thing, because Kelly can be transformed into something positive It's like, you know, logical people think Well, something can either be A It can't be A and not A at the same time, right? That's a fundamental logical proposition But then, so let's say you have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend you, don't, you can't hate them and love them at the same time? I mean, half your life or three quarters of your life will be in that state, you know Families, it's like what is it, 50-50, love and hate? What, what defines a familial relationship might be intensity rather than, you know, whether it's love or hate, it's intense And so you can certainly have a completely paradoxical relationship to yourself or to another person And so part of what happens with these symbolic representations is that they're They're more accurate than mere logic Because life is one of those Life is composed of Oppositions in conjunction And oppositions in conjunction simultaneously So there's very little about it that's logical at all But that doesn't matter because you still have to deal with it You, you have to deal with it at a very fundamental level So